there is a great deal of value in expensive food. And then you have to learn how to stretch it and learn how to stretch it effectively. So organic rice isn't as expensive as organic potatoes at certain times of the year. But when they're in season in your area, then organic potatoes are pretty cheap, relatively. So stretch your food by using additives and have parties where you cook together. There's an organization in Austin called the Sustainable Food Center, and one of the things they do is a lot of cooking classes for low-income people. They've also made the markets that they've been able to get into accept uh, Texas's version of food stamps so that at least they can now buy it. They can use some of their own money to buy good food. And then they're taught how to prepare it because the cheapest food you're going to buy is seasonal. And we're not used to cooking and eating in season. It's, it's going to take a lot of education and support to make something like that happen. And it's going to take time. Whether or not you were aware of the World Health Organization's promotion of Codex Alimentarius, basically the gist of what I've gotten from it was that kind of following the pattern of, of the suicide seats where they're really trying to completely own not just everything that we can see, not trying to put a dollar sign on everything we can see, but putting dollar signs on, on DNA. And their uh, Codex Alimentarius is, uh, from what I've gathered, is a way for them to list nu- nutrients as toxins so that they can regulate that and they can eliminate a large portion of of nutrients from our food so they have the the legal hold on that. The Monsanto scientists uh, met with the FDA scientists and they went through the kinds of modifications that they were making and how those were being done and basically what they were also saying to FDA is how will these products be regulated? I have never seen a situation where one company could have so much overwhelming influence at the highest levels of regulatory decision making as the example of Monsanto with its GM food policy in the government. And so they created a trade commission. That's a very important pair of words, a trade commission called the Codex Alimentarius Commission. It is not a public health commission. It is not a consumer protection commission. It is a trade commission. Now, Codex Alimentarius Commission is administered by the World Health Organization, WHO, and the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization. They fund Codex and they run it at the request of the UN. In 1994, Codex, with no notice here in this country whatsoever, declared nutrients put on your intellectual seatbelts, declared nutrients to be toxins. They're poisons. Dangerous industrial poisons. As poisons, we have to be protected from them. What we're talking about is waking up one morning and being very surprised to find that high potency, therapeutically effective, clinically significant nutrients are now illegal in the way that heroin is illegal. Which rears its incredibly ugly head as Bill HR 875, the so-called Food Safety Modernization Act of 2009. Now this is more of Obama's doing, okay? They're, They're doing it, folks. They're doing it soon. Monsanto has got their wish and they are attempting to nationalize farming and the food source. Folks, this is outrageous and it requires your immediate attention. It really does. HR 875 is the piece of legislation concerning this matter. So you need to contact your representatives and senators about this. You cannot allow this to happen to our children's food. Understand something, people. Understand something here. If if this bill passes, there will no longer be organic food, okay? Organic farmers will be required to spray pesticides and insecticides on their organic crops, hence making it no longer organic. And, and pesticides and insecticides, they kill your immune system, folks. They, they allow you to become sick more often. And the result, of course, is that 
people end up purchasing more and more over-the-counter medicines and prescription drugs from big corporations. This is selling sickness to the people. And buried within these bills, buried within the, the HR 875 bill, are guidelines that will effectively criminalise organic farming by listing organic seeds as a source of contamination. Now think about this folks, think about this, seeds as a source of contamination. Okay, now, now look folks, what happens when seeds get contaminated? Well, they don't grow, that's it, that's all that happens. They don't contaminate the food because they don't grow if they're contaminated. What they're saying is that your organic crops may contaminate the uh, Monsanto genetically engineered crops. You need to stand up and do something about this bill. And you need to completely ignore this legislation if it's passed. You need to go out of your way to start growing organic crops. Everybody needs to boycott this bill. Understand that this isn't law. It's a statute. It's legislation. You don't have to go along with it, okay? You can stand up and make noise about it. This is your food that we're talking about, folks. This is your food. It's very, very important that this not be allowed to happen. You cannot let this occur because this is mass contamination of the world's seed stocks for the masses. Just look at what they're doing. Just, just stop and look at what they're doing with this. They are saying that they only want organic food to be served at the White House. They only want organic food to be served at the palace. But in the meantime, they are forcing the people of the world, the common people of the world, like you and I, to eat genetically modified crops. And they're also locking all of the organic seeds and all of the real seeds, they're locking them in huge underground bunkers in places like Iceland, so people so can't people get, to get to them. Are you at all familiar with that? I have heard a little bit about it, and you've just given a very fine explanation of it, far better than I could. And to me... That is one strategy for controlling the food and making it making it so that the food that is available to us via industrial agriculture is the only food available to us. Another is allowing uh, Monsanto and other organizations to own the genetic basis of plants that come out of the rainforests of Peru, for example. So that now they get to say that other people can't use this genetic stock because they own the genetic stock, even if all they do is tuck it away while they continue to feed us the same junk. So there's just strategies that are being put out. And the I believe that as the alternative movement grows, and it is, the backlash to try to fight it is going to become much more circuitous and devious and I've heard of the Codex, and that's that's one of them. The other thing we tend to do in this country is when a big organization, when a big corporation gets in trouble selling something to us, they just start selling them someplace else, like Monsanto and the seeds that are going to save the world and what they've done to agriculture in India. So we really have to fight it on a global basis because it's being waged on a global basis. Thanks, Mom, for, for coming on and giving us all that information. Yeah, thank you so much, Jules. Oh, you are so welcome. It's been really quite fun. Thank you. It's very, very, very cool what you do and very much needed. So, Absolutely. I, I, I think that the way we eat and, you know, how we can decide on, you know, what to purchase and where to purchase and from whom has a lot to do with not just the food itself because that speaks for itself. The food that is grown sustainably is more nutritious as a whole, we would feel better if we all ate that way. But also just as a cycle, as far as our earth, too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. We haven't even begun to get into the issues of obesity and some of the other stuff around food. That's an endless process of discovery and shock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're in shock. <laughs> it's a real pleasure having you on. Thank you for feeding us. <laughs> thank you thank you you all have a good night Brian and I have been trying to make wiser decisions about food being on a fixed income is, is one of the huge things we face when it comes to buying healthy I mean literally we go to I don't know if you know what Aldi's is but it's a it's a food store that like they don't bag for you and stuff so they can really bring down the prices of food 